is uh, Max Wesley Mossart. I have a feeling he'll do like some of you sleep through my sermon. Oh, there's a way. Oh, now, taking the thing from my mouth. Anyway, I just had to uh, Andrea and Evan were kind enough to bring him to church. They were over at their BFC this morning, right? Oh, we beat them on the on the reveal. Yeah. So anyway, there he is. Don't wake him up. I'm crying. Come on, grow up, kid. Thank you. You know, I'm, I'm trying very hard not to be that goofy grandpa. Pastor, you know, every sermon's got to have an illustration about his grandson or something in it, and, uh, and uh, but I just had to show him off, so that's, uh, no, there was no stopping me there. Oh, well, anyway, Psalms uh, 139 is where our, kind of our launch, launch off place is, and we have been uh, dealing with uh, a series called uh, Framing My Worldview, Framing Your Worldview. Uh, Psalms 139, I love this passage of scripture. Uh, you created my inmost being. You did me together my mother's womb. You know, that's a great sunny uh, verse for when you show up your green kid like that. I praise you because I am fearfully and what? Wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made. In a secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, you saw my unformed body. All my days were what? Ordained for me. Were written in your book before one of them came to be. We're talking about, uh, again, framing my worldview. What is a worldview? Uh, my worldview is made of all the beliefs that I build my life upon. Uh, it's important for us to, to have the right frame. So much of our conduct, so much of our... Uh, our identity, who we are, is wrapped up in this, this issue of what <clears throat> life is about, what our worldview is. Everybody's got a worldview, whether you realize it or not. You've you got one. Um, and, and the question comes up um, about God. And, and I, I think I've talked about that in the last sermon. If there's no God, the question about purpose in life is meaningless. If everything is an accident, this is all a product of chance, then there is no rhyme or reason for it. Life has no purpose. Life doesn't matter. And, the, and people who, uh, who are not inclined to believe in the existence of God will argue with that. But if they're very honest, if they're honest with themselves, uh, they'll come down to the fact that this really has no purpose. There is no design. There is no, there's no purpose in it. So, the, the question is, is, is then, who is, am I, and, and where do I come from? And it's very profound implications will affect the rest of your life and will affect society. And we understand foundational truths about where I come from, okay? So that, that's kind of the question this morning. Where did I come from? Three pillars of what we believe. Uh, very clear. Number one, that God created everything. That God created everything. Genesis 1, 1. Everybody knows it. In the beginning, God, what? Created. created the heavens and the earth. Uh, you know, if, if you can't get past those first four wo words in the Bible, then life has no meaning. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. He spoke it into existence. He spoke everything into existence. How long did that take? I don't know. I wasn't there. Did it take a second? Uh, did it take six days? Did it take... Billion years? Uh, I had someone ask me one time, do I believe in a, a young earth or an old earth? And I said, I believe in a God earth. <laughs> I believe in a God earth. And we can thank uh, the great theologian, Albert Einstein, uh, for introducing to us and proving to us the fact that uh, time is relative. Uh, always before we thought of time was constant, no matter where we were in the universe. But we found out through... Uh, through uh, Brother Einstein, that time is relative. 
relative to mass and to speed. Um, uh, 2 Peter 3, 8. Do not forget this thing, my dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. That little bit of information predates Einstein. Did you know that? <laughs> Time is relative. <clears throat> relative to mass and speed. What is the mass of God? I don't know. He's pretty big. Amen? Amen. What's the speed of God? I don't know. I think he's pretty fast, don't you? God to take as long as he wanted to to create all things, uh, or as little time as he wanted to create all things. Pastor, do you believe uh, that God used the theory of evolution? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, it's a theory, but I do not believe it. We know that there is in the uh, species, that there is changes in species. There is certainly ad adaptation. We can see that all kinds of things, you know, they find fish that have been trapped in a cave for, whatever, thousands of years, a type of fish, and over time that they have just basically lost their eyes because they don't need eyes, they have adapted them, they don't need anymore. We know that breeds can change as in animals, that uh, we can breed changes in animals. I saw a program, I think it was just yesterday, that they bred basset hounds to have a white tip on the end of their tail, so that when they're out there in the grass uh, hunting away, their tails wagging, you can see the, the bat. I didn't know that about basset hounds. That was very remarkable. And all the pictures I saw of basset hounds on the program, they all had a white tail. I think that's very interesting. Aren't you glad you were here to learn that today? <laughs> well, we've never seen an animal or plant, for that matter, change species. Nobody has ever changed a mouse into a monkey. There's absolutely zero evidence of species change in the fossil record. There is not any fossil that proves the species change, so the theory of evolution is just that theory. And young people, they're going to belittle you, they're going to make fun of you, they will insult you forever suggesting that the theory of evolution is a theory. Okay? Just be ready for it. Um, what's that? You were, you were born ready? Jeff, I believe that about you. Um, oh, well, you know, what about the dinosaurs? Uh, <laughs> what about the dinosaurs? Um, there we go. Boom. I had a cartoon on there. Here we go. Okay, let's go back one, one picture. People ask you that. You know, what I want to ask is, uh, well, why do people ask, why did, instead of asking about why were there dinosaurs, what about the dinosaurs? I should ask, why is the Lord letting you ask these silly questions all the time, you know? Uh, I don't know. Do you believe uh, dinosaurs are around with Adam? No, I, I don't. Then why did they go extinct? I don't know. Why? Maybe so you could drive your car a thousand miles. I don't know. Uh, the Bible doesn't spend a lot of time talking about how God created the universe. Instead, he talked, uh, spends a lot of time talking about why he created the universe. Isaiah 45, 18. He did not create it to be emptied but formed it to be inhabited. So, so in other words, th this whole thing, this earth and all creation, he placed it here so he could put you here. He put it at just the right distance from the sun. He tilted it at just the right axis on his, on his axis. He set it spinning at just the right speed so that you wouldn't go flying off into the universe and that you would stay put. You see, um, uh, he, he created all this because of you. Did God need you? No. Uh, but he wanted you. Did I need to have children? No. I didn't need to have children. But did I want to have children? Yes, I wanted to have children. And it's the same way with God. He did it for his pleasure. He did it for his own glory. He did it for his because of love. Why are you here? If you were to melt all of it down, all of that, why, why in the world you were here? Why are you breathing the next breath? Why are you sitting there where you're at? You are basically here because God is a God of love. And he loves you. Um, he, he, he loves to see you succeed in life. He loves you. He just loves you. Okay? Point number two we're working on. Uh, there we are. If you're, if, I don't think we have it on the screen, but we're going on. Uh, point number two. God thought of us first but created us last. 
thought of you first, but he created you last. We are all the reasons he put the stuff together. Ephesians 1, 4, long before he laid the foundations, first foundations, he had us in mind. He settled on us. The focus of his love, this is from the message, to be made whole by his holy love. Long before he laid his first foundations, he had you in mind. He created the universe because he wanted to create people. James 1.18, he, to, to, he chose to give us birth through the word of the truth that he, we might be the first fruits of all creation. You are the crowning of the crown of creation. God's crowning event of creation. Turn to somebody next to you and say, you were the crowning event of God's creation. <laughs> and then turn back and say, it's about time you figure that out. Okay? You know? This is important for us to understand. This is, this is basic. First of all. Three, God custom designed each of us. God custom designed each of us. I, I love that passage I read in the beginning. I'm going to read it again in, in the message. Psalms 139. Oh yes, you shaped me inside. Then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. I thank you, high God. You're, you're, you're breathtaking. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. I worship in adoration. What a creation, creator, creation. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made, bit by bit, how I was sculpted from nothing into something. Like an open book, you watched me grow from, uh, from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I even lived one day. Again, you are not an accident. There are accidental parents. There are no accidental babies. Amen? Amen. It, it doesn't matter whether your parents planned you, whether your parents were good people or bad people. God chose them for you to bring them together so that you would become the person he intended you to be. God custom designed each one of you Psalms 139 tells me that. So, having said all that, what are the implications? What are the implications uh, of all this? The implication number one is, number one is, my life has sanctity. My life has sanctity. There is, there, there is something about my life that is special. It, it sanctified, we talked about this before, sanctified means to set apart. Mm, Rick Green version, your life is special. You see, Human beings are the unique part of God's creation from the rest of creation. Why are we unique? A, uh, God designed us, made us in his image, in his image. In Genesis 127. So you created God, uh, so God created man in his own image, and the image of God he created, male and female. So you're different from all the animals. Um, you, you make moral choices. You can choose between right and wrong. You have a conscience. You can, you can make decisions. Um, you can talk to God. Animals cannot. So God designed me in his image. Uh, B, God planned my whole life before I was born. Before I was born, <clears throat> Jeremiah 1.8. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you before you were born. I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet of nations. So, so God has a purpose for my life. Before you even took your first breath, he thought of you. Um, biblical examples. Rebecca is giving birth to twins. Uh, she feels them fighting around inside of their body. Wouldn't you just love to have that if you were the mother of the family? And God said, there are two nations fighting inside you. The, the older is going to serve the younger. <coughs> Before they were even born, God had, had uh, Jacob and Esau in mind. Uh, Isaiah uh, was talking about uh, a God's call uh, upon his life. And he said, the Lord has called me before birth from within the womb. He, he called me by name. Elizabeth is pregnant with John the Baptist. 
And the Bible tells us that even before he was born, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, why? Because God had a plan and a purpose for his life. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. This, this, this has no meaning, absolutely no meaning if you're here by chance. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Uh, uh, see, God made me for his pleasure. God made me for his pleasure. Uh, Revelations 4, 11, you are worthy, O Lord, God, to receive glory and honor and power. You created all things, and by your will they were created, and, and they have their being. You were you are worthy to receive glory and honor and pleasure. Uh, uh, Green paraphrase, this was all about your glory, your pleasure. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is about you. Everything you see, God made it for his enjoyment. Uh, you know, Mary and I were taking a walk this, last night, and one tree was growing in somebody's garden. I said, you know, that, that's, just, that's a pretty tree. But I think God has the same response, you know. I stand outside and I, I see a, a sunset. That's a beautiful sunset. I, I, God has the same response. Every now and then you're in a place of nature, you see a waterfall, it's just, just you know, it's beautiful, beautiful. You're on the soccer field and your son, your daughter scores a goal and you're cheering. And you're like, man, you enjoy that. You're operating life and you do something that your skills and your creativity brings to and, and you succeed in life and, and God is you know cheering you on. God, I love that. I love that. You know, before the girls uh, got old and, and married, um, uh, Marla was still at home, but uh, Tara and Andrea would come home. They, they all had their own room downstairs in the basement in our house in uh, Brookings and I remember one time sneaking in their rooms and taking their picture while they were asleep. I still have the pictures. I wouldn't dare show them to you, but they would skin their dad alive if I did. But, uh, you know, why did I do that? Because I just, you know, I just love seeing my girls in my own home, sleeping in their own beds. Just seeing them. I just, just loved it. You know? I couldn't see me doing that after they got married, sneaking into the room with their husband. Right there. <laughs> yes, I realize that sounds kind of creepy, sneaking into your daughter's room, taking a photo of them while they're sleeping. But I'm just, I just love them. I love those pictures. I see them every now and then. God, God is the same way about you. I really believe it. You were his creation. He made you for his pleasure. He enjoys spending time with you. He enjoys talking to you. He enjoys it when you talk to him. God made you for his pleasure. All creation for his pleasure. Going back to our outline. Uh, number two, uh, my, my identity has dignity. If God created all things, if God created all things, then my identity, who I am, has dignity. And, and really deep down inside, inside, what we want in life is dignity. And we may not call it that, but that's what we want. We want our life to matter. We want our life to be worth something. We want our life to be valuable. We want our life to have significance. Uh, what is it that gives us dignity? What is it that gives us value? And we look for all kinds of things to give us dignity, to give us some kind of value. We look for in wealth and fame and sex and physical beauty, but all those things are fleeting. And if we trust in them, we look for in them, then our, our sense of dignity and value will be fleeting. Real dignity comes from, A, realizing that God sacrificed his son for me. Real dignity comes from realizing that God sacrificed his son for me. You're worth dying for. All these uh, verses are on the outline that you have. Uh, I love this one. 1 Peter 1.18 For you know that it was not without perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed. You weren't redeemed with gold or silver. That stuff has really no lasting value. You redeemed from the empty way of life handed down from the forefathers. But with the, if you have that with you before you, what is that next word? With the what? 
precious blood of Christ. Oh, we do have it on the screen. Do I have it? With the precious blood of Christ. The precious blood of Christ. A lamb without blemish or defect. That's how you were redeemed. That's what God paid for you for. He has chosen, he was chosen for the creation of all things. He was revealed in the last things for your, your sake. How do you judge the worth of something? How do we judge the worth of something in, in our society? Well, if it's very old, we consider it very valuable. I think on that scale, some of you are a lot more valuable than others, huh? Okay. Amen? Okay. Amen? Somebody's honest, but there's some here kind of like, well, I'm not getting fancy up that one. We, we judge by its beauty, a great piece of art, so forth. We judge by its rarity. But really, when it comes down to it, value is determined by what somebody's willing to pay for it. Uh, action comic books, number one, is considered the holy grail of comic books uh, by Stephen Fisher, leading expert on collectible comics and a founder of ComicConnect.com. He writes, before Action Comics number one, there was no such thing as a superhero or a man who could fly. Comics weren't even that popular. It is the single most important event in comic book history. Valued at, what do you think? $1.5 million. A million and a half dollars is the value if you had a copy of that. How many of you would pay a million dollars for that? I'm telling you, you were dumb. <laughs> Buy it for a million, sell it for a million and a half, and you made it five hundred thousand. You see you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't pay a million for it to keep it for myself. Well, the reason that's valuable is because somebody's willing to pay that much for it. What are you worth? What are you worth? What was God willing to sacrifice for your salvation? That, that means that, that you have value, you have dignity. That means that everybody you meet has value and dignity. It doesn't matter if they're Republicans or Democrats or Independents. They have value. It doesn't matter if they're a man or a woman. They have value. It doesn't matter if they're an atheist or gay or New Age or prostitute or whatever label you may put on them. They have value. Because God created people and he paid a sacrifice for them. Amen? Amen? B. God wants to place his Holy Spirit in me. God wants to place his Holy Spirit in me. When you invite Christ into your heart, when you invite Christ into your life, uh, he places his Holy Spirit in you. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. We talked about this a few weeks ago. Um... If, if I have something really, really valuable, then generally people and I will put it in something special. They'll get a, a special frame, or they'll get a special table, or a special vase, or a special box, or something, or a very costly, you know, save, or, or whatever. And, and this, this is a, a, a signal. That God values us because he trusts us enough to place his Holy Spirit in us. God wants to place his Holy Spirit in you. You have dignity. You have value. See, G uh, Jesus is willing to give me a new identity. My new identity. He loves me so much. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, as anyone is a new Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. Think about the story of the woman caught in adultery. You know it so well. You know, they're using her to test Jesus. They bring her to her. They, they know the law. Jesus knows the law. This woman's caught in the very act. She deserves stoning. You know, what do you do? You know the story. Jesus gets down to the dirt and, and writes, which is a very curious part of the gospel. We don't have any idea what he's writing in, in the dirt and so forth. Uh, I, I don't know. You know the story. He, he, he looks at them and says, he is without sin, cast the first stone. Well, what's so beautiful about this story is, is the way he's treating this woman with the dignity. He, he's protected her. He's protecting her dignity. He didn't agree with what she was doing, 
but he did protect her dignity and he did it in a very public way. Christ has not only come to save you people, but he's come to give you a new life. A new life, a new beginning. The Bible's words, not my words. Um, it doesn't matter what you have done in the past. Uh, it doesn't matter who you were. What, what, what matters is, is that you have come to Christ and, and accepted him. By his power, he can give you a new identity. Why does he do that? Again, because of love. Because of love. Christ has not only come to save you, but to renew you and give you new life. Uh, three, of my days have destiny. My days have destiny. Back to Psalms 139. Your eyes saw me in my unformed body all the days... Ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Again, my life has purpose. God has a plan. All my days were ordained for me, were written in his book. Pastor, you know, that sounds great, but uh, what about my mistakes? What about my sins? Are they preordained? Uh, no. Just because God knew that he was gonna do, you were going to do them ahead of time, doesn't that mean that he caused them to happen? One of the most powerful things that you have at your disposal is your free will. You have the ability, God allows you the ability to choose. He wants you to love him. It has to be by free will. So God is not caught off guard by your mistakes. But through your mistakes, life can have his destiny and his purpose for you. He's that great of a God. Ephesians 2.10 We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for you to do, for us to do. My life has a destiny. My life has a purpose. God is working to bring all that together. Again, if all of this is by chance, that's not true. That's the big lie if it's all by chance. I don't know, call me selfish, but I want to believe my life has purpose, don't you? For uh, my life has a purpose. My problems have a purpose. My problems have a purpose. This, this means that there's meaning in the mess, in the mess. Um, and you may not see it now, while you're in the middle of it. Because we have very uh, lack of ability to see in the midst of crisis and problems and so forth. But so often, when we get away from it and we look back on it, our, our 2020 hindsight finally kicks in. And we're able to see things a whole lot better. We're able to say that God took this event and he gave me a purpose in the middle of it. Did he cause it to happen? No. There's enough evil in life for God to cause these things to happen. He did allow it to happen. Yes. One of the most powerful lessons in the Bible about the purpose of pain uh, in the midst of pain, is, is the story of Joseph. Again, you know the story so well. Um, Joseph, uh, before I get to Joseph, I meant to uh, click on that verse. A uh, great verse, you know it again. We know that all things work for good for those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. That first line, that first part is just amazing. But uh, Joseph, if Joseph had any fault, it was his ability, willingness to share with his brothers uh, the dreams he had. Jealousy, jealousy, jealousy. They take him, throw him in a pit. That's not good. They turn around and sell him into slavery. Mm, that's a bad day. He's in slavery in Egypt. He gets falsely accused and he's just trying to do the right thing. Not great. Thrown into prison. Bummer. Forgotten by his associates. Really, really bad. You know the story, giving glory to God, Joseph arrives to what would be the uh, second most powerful man in the world at that time? He is. His brothers show up, again, you know the story, his chance to get even. He tests them, but it doesn't bring uh, retribution. Later on in life, he, he says this, it's really important. 
sentence to his brothers, who are concerned that he's going to, you know, off them. Um, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Why are you experiencing the pain that you are experiencing right now? I will tell you, <clears throat> the bottom line is that last part, the saving of many lives. All the mess, all the problems, all, all the yuck that's happening in your life. Why is God allowing this to happen? Well, there could be a lot of reasons, but ultimately, ultimately, the reason is so that you can be involved in the saving of many lives. And that, that promise is only possible if there is a God in the universe. And he made you, and he made you for a purpose. You see why this is really important for us to understand? Uh, young people, this is really important for you to get now. You know, because you're going to be bombarded with all kinds of messages and images that saying that uh, you are just a product of chance. Uh, don't believe it. With all your heart, with your greatest strength of mind and character, hang on to the fact that you are a special creation of God. And, and life stinks sometimes. Sometimes it's really nice. I like that part. Amen? You know? and sometimes it stinks. And some, you, some of you kids are already experiencing things that I would have never wanted to experience in my life. God bless you. God bless you. Why does this happen to me? Why did God have to have me? Well, there are a lot of reasons. But ultimately, it's so that there is the saving of many lives. That you can save lives. I think that's great, huh? Amen? Amen. Amen. So that lies let me say. Uh, final point, my future is eternity. My future is eternity. Uh, you are an eternal creation. You are going to last in eternity. My hope is, is that you will last it with me, with the house of the Lord, for there is surely goodness and love, King James Version, and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will what? Dwell in the house, Dwell in the house of the Lord for how long? Forever. Forever. Again, that, that, that has no meaning in a worldview that says um, there is no God. That's your product of chance. That has no meaning. But if there is a God, and I believe there is, that you, my friends, have great value. Well, why doesn't God just show himself to me? Uh, well, he tried that once, uh, a little experiment called the, uh, the people of Israel traveling through the wilderness, and uh, it didn't encourage a whole lot of uh, fellowship. They were afraid of him. Why doesn't God show himself? Well, he, he did. His name is Jesus Christ, and he revealed himself to you. Why do I have to have faith? And believe in this. Well, number one, this is God's plan. I mean, He is still God, amen? Right? You know what? Faith is a possible belief God. This is what He wants. He wants you and I to believe in Him and have faith in Him. There's plenty of evidence. There's the reliable source of His Word. And then there's you and Him. You and Him. Framing my world. Are you a product of chance? Where did you come from? The primal ooze? I don't know. I don't think so. You are a product of God's creation. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. It's your responsibility to get in line with him and discover that plan and follow him with it. That's a great thing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Dear Lord, I, uh, you know, some of this uh, stuff is just such basic Bible stuff. But every now and then it's, it's great to uh, just dig down into your word and, and, and re renew our determination or commitment to have faith in you, to believe in you. Lord, along the way, you know, there may be doubts and there may be struggles along the way, but um, as we sung earlier, never once. Did you ever 
leave us. Never once did you ever let us go, Lord. I thank you for these people. I thank you, I thank you right now for these young people who are on the process of discovery about life. I pray that everything that happens in their world that, that drives them along, Lord, that they would in this have that sense that you are there, that God is there, that He is dealing in their your, their lives. You are dealing in their lives, Lord. Draw them, use them, call them, Lord. Sanctify them, set them apart for your purpose. Certainly, they are special creations. Of Dear God, we love you. We say this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Shake hands with somebody. Tell them you're special. Get out of here.